Hi, I'm Dr. Bonnie Clipper, the Chief Clinical Officer at WAMBI. Today, I'm here with Brittany Merkel, Lead Innovation Strategist at University Hospital Ventures. Brittany, thank you for taking the time to be with me today. Hi, Bonnie. It's so great to be virtually here with you today. And Brittany, you know, our world has changed dramatically, literally since, since January or February. We've, we've um, kind of taken on this just incredible pandemic. Uh, we, we found ourselves in, in a, a recession with some economic issues. And certainly we've been moving through um, some much um, needed uh, diversity and um, equity and inclusion conversations in our country to really end um, racism. So, so much has changed for us. So you're a nurse um, and certainly you're, you're a leader in your industry and people often look to nurses and, and leaders for guidance and direction. What thoughts and insights can you share on how we can show up as our best selves every day and how can we just help make the world a better place? Sure, absolutely. I'm honored for the opportunity and I'm privileged to be a part of this conversation this profession and this industry at such a pivotal moment. So thank you, Bonnie. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, there's really three silver linings for me in this. And one, nurses to the public are now seen as what we always have been, uh, despite typical jabs or the discounts to the profound impact that we truly make on patients' lives. Yes, we are caregivers and care is a core part of our profession, but we care because we're strong. And that shows now more than ever in the way that nurses advocate for patients, for our communities, for human rights, other nurses and our profession. Um, nurses, we have always had a presence, but now we have a visibility as well. And the year of the nurse and the nurse midwife, as the World Health Organization has deemed it for 2020, is just a foundation laid for, for nurses and midwives to come. Um, the second sil silver lining for me in this is that when we talk about nursing innovation and workarounds and the ability to think creatively, to find real-time solutions. This was pre-existing, and, and we've talked about this several times, Bonnie, about how MacGyvering is really already out there happening on the front lines, and the, re, the real key issue here is, is scale. And COVID-19 has illuminated this tenfold. I've witnessed it firsthand within my own system that ED nurses are jerry-rigging their own masks to ensure a better fit or enhance their comfort, or they're finding new ways to approach social distancing. And nurses and frontline staff are, are very creative, and we already knew this, um, but we know this even more now. The ideas are already there in disparate parts. They're primed for making substantial change, but only if given the right conditions. These workarounds are not just a clue to a potential solution, but even further, a call to action for opportunities in the design for services, our policies, our procedures, our tangible products. And we have an opportunity to see these workarounds as a means of education in terms of our leadership and the opportunities for design. Um, and third, I think thinking more of a systems level, our healthcare and governmental systems as a whole realize now that we can't return to that old thinking that we were before of being risk averse, being reactive. We need to think about this epidemiological curve and many other curves at the beginning, the very beginning, rather than beginning to act in these accelerating phases when it's almost too late. And we talk a lot about advanced care planning for our patients, but and actually probably not as much as we should, but nurses also need to be at the table when we're doing advanced care planning for our systems, our policies, our procedures, as we move into this new normal and, and many new normals to come. And I, I try to channel or think to channel your inner Amy Poehler, your Tina Fey, and, and grab a seat even when you aren't invited and, and know that your contribution, your form of leadership might look different than others at the table. Uh, I just saw a post by Dr. Dan Weber. He recently said, you don't have to be a hero, you're a human. And I just love that. I think nurses get people. I mean, we really get people. And yes, that is our superpower, but that also comes with responsibility, with a lot of reflection and heaviness, the consist consistent need to bounce back from hard times and knowing that we most likely have another new normal or some tidal wave to, to come to face. Um, there's a lot of work to be done to maintain this positioning of more proactive resilience. So we need to support each other in this transition, ultimately. And that's not only um, for growth, but for respite. You know, I, I love, um, you packed so much into that. So thank you. And, and I love where you're going. We did start the pandemic out and really heard about healthcare heroes and, and how incredibly important the roles of nurses and physicians, respiratory therapists, many disciplines were. 
And very shortly after that took hold, we learned that that was actually not a helpful phrase to use because it was difficult for healthcare providers, nurses, physicians to feel as though they were living up to that sort of hero mentality and stature. And in fact, we are humans doing extraordinary work. So I'm incredibly proud of, of my profession. Um, I think people are doing amazing work. I'm very proud of you, watching you grow as a young nurse in your career. So I think you have an incredible trajectory ahead of you that I will be watching. So um, I know, Brittany, that you are an avid reader. Is there anything you're reading that you want to share with us? Yes, I have a few on my reading list and sitting next to me actually right now. Um, one which speaks to how to recognize and act on the obvious dangers that we, we often ignore, which is called the gray rhino. Um, if you're familiar with uh, the black swan, it's, it's kind of like the cousin of that, of thinking about what is highly probable um, and thinking about how we can think through these things um, and, and anticipate what's to come. Um, the other is along those lines of resiliency and also resonance and how to become a resonant leader. Um, and just thinking about um, developing emotional intelligence, renewing relationships and sustaining your effectiveness in, in these times of change. Um, and I think the ability to be resilient and resonant is gonna be the paramount for our profession moving forward um, to keep that momentum going for nursing leadership and research and innovation. And uh, here at University Hospitals, we are planning um, our inaugural Nursing Research and Innovation Day, which is on the August 28th, 2020, um, coming up very soon. And that's to celebrate the year of the resilient nurse, um, knowing that nurses have always been and continue to be resilient in the face of challenges. Um, and the third that I have is not a, a book, but it's a journal. And um, it's my biggest recommendation is to write down all the thoughts and the craziness that's happening and, and begin to reflect because there's so much going on and it's okay to be an introvert and to channel all that energy into things and, and start to process in, in your own way. And I am a huge fan of the journal because it allows you to get things out of your head and come back and revisit them. So thank you for adding that. That was a very pleasant surprise. Love the journal. Certainly. <laughs> so Brittany, where can people find you on social media? Sure. So you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I don't have a Twitter handle or most social medias, unfortunately, but I am on LinkedIn. Um, it's forward slash B Merkel and then also on ventures.uhhospitals.org. Awesome. And thank you again for taking time out of your crazy busy schedule to be with me today. I really do appreciate that. Certainly. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm Dr. Bonnie Clipper. And remember, at Wambi, moments move us.